Good Friday morning. Well, it's a little after 12 noon, so um, it's not morning anymore. Um, what I'm going to try to do now is I'm using the Sony HDR SR12 camcorder that I've told you that does great close-ups. I am going to hook up the uh, audio video cables. Uh, composite video to my monitor over there and I'm going to work on the insulation tester. Now I was going to wait until the chips got here while it's Friday, you know, Friday morning I checked the mail. There is no chips in the mail yet. Uh, they're supposed to come uh, by May 20th from Singapore. Um, and someone else was supposed to send me uh, some chips. Um, but I haven't got them yet. So I don't know what's going on with the post office. But you know how that is. So um, rather than to delay this, this is going to be part one of this video I want to examine that transistor that I told you about on the board that's laying down so I can see if I can identify it and I'll try to test it for shorts I could do that with an ohm meter if I can get my leads in there I should be able to and um, find uh, the identifying number if there is one on it and Pretty much that will be it for this video until the chips arrive, either from one of my viewers or uh, Singapore, whichever comes first. But that will be in part two. Now, I'm going to try to identify the polarity that's going to be on pin 12. If I don't get my positive voltages on pin 12 on this circuit board if the if it isn't positive and negative on what is it pin 7 I don't recall now but I have the pin out for the TL494 chip anyways so I'm going to do that on this video <clears throat> and if that all proves to be okay and the transistor isn't shorted which I'm going to try to find out on this video uh, fine. If the polarity is, in other words, the voltage is not on pin 12 on this circuit board, that will be the end of this series because I'm not going to go and put a TL494 in here unless pin 12 has positive on it. And as I recall, I think pin 7's a negative. If that's not the case, then we can't try out putting the TL494 in here. In which case, this will probably just go to the ham auction. So, let's get going on this. It's going to rain today, tomorrow, and uh, maybe even Easter Sunday. Can't do anything else. The weather's nice and mild. I don't need my jacket. I don't need electric heat in the shop. So let's get going before I wear out all the uh, your time by flapping. You know me when it comes to flapping. Okay, I can plainly see the screen. Uh, so I get this out of here now. Of course, I'm working on an angle. All right, let's get this out of the case. There's the owner's manual in there. I'll say the SR12 does really good, but the file size is a humongous. But as long as I run it to the Sony Movie Studio 13, I uh, have no problems. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I really should put something down here to protect the meter face. Don't scratch it. 
Uh, before we do that, let's turn it on here. And you can see that the battery check. You can see it's working, so we know the meter movement's working. So we turn it off. And we get a Phillips screwdriver. It's very hard for me, as I said, to work under a camera. So I'm trying to... I don't want to tilt this camera too much. It's very heavy. And... Uh... It could knock, it could fall right over on me and come crashing down. It's my best camera for this type of work. All right. Now, what we want to do is put that over here. It's out of the way. Okay. Now. This is what I'm worried about here. Now to read the chip, as everyone's telling me, you read it from the top. But before we do that, let me see if I can magnify this so I can see it on the TV. Can't seem to manipulate it. This is why I have trouble working under a camera because uh, I still have to rely on the old magnifying glass and get my soldering iron in there and unsolder the wires to this and here. I really didn't want to take this apart twice. Uh, now and then putting it together and then when the chips come in. The chips aren't here yet. So, um, they could come in Saturday, but, um, like I say, one of my viewers is sending me a couple of chips. He had a surplus of them, of the TL-494. Uh, but I don't know why they're not here. I, I just sent the post office, you know how that is. But, uh, what I want to do is to unsolder the battery from this. But, first of all, I got to do this first. So... This I hate. See, there's the deossible movement in there. Uh, see if I can zoom in on that. You don't want to get any dirt in there or anything dropping in there. So we got a red wire that goes down inside the deossible, and the, the most terrifying things that could happen is if this wire here, the red wire, becomes unhooked from inside the deossible movement, you have to be a watchmaker in order to repair it. It's, you might as well throw the thing out if that comes off. So I'm very, very leery about messing around with this. Ideally, I should glue this little cover that was on here, on it, back on, but I'm afraid I might get glued down inside the deossible movement, and then you might as well trash the thing. So, what I'm going to try to do, this is going to be an awful big video file, I can tell you that right now. Let me back off a little bit here, tighten that up. Just hope this camera doesn't fall over on me. I've still got to use my magnifying glass. And now... See, I can't, I can't see that 
even on the camera, I can see the black wire going over here. And to me, I don't know where my pointing stick is. I'll have to use my finger. Uh, right there. But I need this. I need this. Oh, it's over here. I'm going to end up breaking this red wire off. And I don't even think Mike would want to try to tackle putting that back on down there. Let's tin this iron again. Make sure it's cleaned and tinned. Okay. These are the type of job that you carry the solder over on the iron. Okay. The black one isn't a problem. It's the red one. I'm so worried about that breaking off. Okay, now, here is uh, the positive. The positive on the double A pack, and oh man, I gotta use. I gotta use my right hand to hold the iron. I'm not used to that. I'm left handed. get coordinated remember I got can't show my frustrations on this I'm gonna do this off camera I'm sorry well that's what happens when you're half blind I unsoldered this wire over here and I made a mess of it because I couldn't see when my soldering iron wasn't on it uh, I didn't need to take this wire off of the battery pack because that's just the jumper that goes from here to here. These are the wires I have to remove over on this end. Uh, I can't get coordinated with this. Okay, see that? See them two wires there? The black on the left and the red on the right? Those are the ones I got to remove. Um, because if I don't remove them, I'm going to snap them off, flexing this board back and forth here, trying to look at it. Um, this worries me. This here. This thing here worries me. It worries me big time. Because I need the, that cover needs to be on here. I'm going to mess up the deossible movement. It's... Oh... I need to put this back on. Now I got some Duco cement, but I know what's going to happen. That stuff runs. It, it's great cement, great glue. But I know what's going to happen. It's going to run down into the mechanism, and then uh, then I'm going to have to trash it. This needs to be on there. I could try to scotch tape it on there. But it's a very tight fit to the whole of the um, board. I could try taping it. It would be safer taping that on there. Because I'm so afraid of that red wire coming off the uh, deossible movement. On this one... I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry about I can't I can't manipulate. All right. I got to use a screwdriver. I can't find my pointing stick. See where this black wire is here? It's on a terminal right on the outside of the meter movement. This one here goes down inside and uh, hate pointing with this because if there's metal filings on the end of this it's going to get in there but I don't I can't find my pointing stick I don't know where it is right now it's on the bench somewhere uh, this goes down into a little 
Sorry, I gotta get used to this setup I got here. Where is the... All right, there's a little groove in there. I can see it with the magnifying glass. I cannot see it on camera. I'm not going to keep playing around with this, but there's a groove right there. All right. It's right there. All right, and that wire has to drop down in that groove. I don't want to try hot glue in there. And I'm afraid I might not get the circuit board in if I try to put anything in there. This is this is very, very tedious work. Very, very, very tedious. I don't know what to put in there. I'm afraid I'm going to damage this damn coil. See, this here is a little bit sticky. But I don't have anything. I have hot glue and I have duco cement, which is very, very watery. And any attempt to put that on there might run inside the meter movement. I'm trying things that are way out of my field because of my eyesight. I'm going to probably kick myself for doing this. Duco cement. I don't have a toothpick. I have hardly anything in this shop when I need it, but let me try a Q-tip. If I can I'll cut the end off a Q-tip with the uh, wire cutter. Okay, so what I've got here is a uh, Q-tip with the tip cut off. Uh, I'm going to have to work on I'm not going to use this camera uh, to view it. I'll use my magnifying glass because I need to see what I'm doing. So if I put a little bit of Duco cement on that, just a drop on the Q-tip. Oh boy. The cap got locked down there with the glue. Uh, let's see, you just put a tiny bit on the on the Q-tip here. I'm gonna probably this is gonna be a first, so I'll either ruin it or I'll succeed, one or the other. I'm holding down the wire. The wire is in the uh, little groove. I don't know how fast the Duco cement sets up. The fingernail's dirty from scratching the paint there uh, this morning. <laughs> you see the paint underneath my fingernail? I was checking it. The paint that I put on the van uh, floor is totally dry and almost hardened up. Because of the layer that's thick, I, uh, when it was running off the edge, I scratched at it to test the hardness. Um, it still needs to harden up, but it's doing quite well. The weather yesterday was kind of chilly. Today it's in the 60s, but it's uh, going to be raining. 
So now, the only way I can tell if this glue is setting up is leave it alone. It didn't run inside the housing. The only way I can tell is to check the Q-tip. And if the glue is dry on the Q-tip stem, it is dry in here. Okay, there we are. You see the see what I now if that red wire ever come off from the deossible movement. Like I say, it would take a watchmaker to put that back in there, and it would probably not be successful because it ruined the deossible. The meter movement's fine as you saw it, but I need to glue back the top, the little protector. I need to glue that back on, and that's going to be very, very hard for me to do without getting glue down inside there. All right, so... Let me stop the recording now. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. As you can see, I've unsoldered the negative and the positive from here, so this unit is separate. And now, what I got to do is I got to get that cover on there. And the problem is, let me move this out of the way here. The problem is with this hole here, this cover edges drag on the printed circuit board when you're pulling it out. And that's how this came off in the first place. Um, so, the question is, I really want to get this cover on before I do anything on the board. I've got to be a watchmaker to work on this stuff. If this had been anything else but a deossible movement, which is so easily to get jammed up with a little piece of dirt or lint or anything, uh, the glue, uh, you know, your capital was a little string of glue, like a little cobweb type of thing that went inside. And I was able to get it out of the way with my Q-tip stem. But that's example of how it can get screwed up. Or FUBAD. You know what FUBAR means? F-U-B-A-R? Um, but I don't know. You don't know. I gotta do something. I gotta get this on there. Now what I wanna do is inspect this and I'm going to be in the way of the camera, but I cannot see with the cameras. I told you so many times. I have to go in and see if there's glue set. There's so little glue on there, and there is no strings in there, so there's so little glue on there that... Um, I guess I'm going to have to try to glue that in. I think it's dry. It seems to be smooth. I don't dare try to cut this smaller in diameter. I got to get it centered. Oh man, I'm telling you, this is like watchmaking. This is the first for me, and I used to use do small stuff like this. But not with the ossible movements. I've never messed around with them. It's taboo. I don't know. Did I get any glue on that? 
Yeah, there was a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of glue. I got glue on the batteries trying to reach over. cover on the glue before it goes all over the bench here. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. There's very, very little glue on this. I don't know if it's centered. This is why I didn't want to take this out, but obviously you need to do it in order to get at things. Now, let me just feel. See, there's a little overhang there. Not a problem getting the board back in but pulling it out again. So what I'll let that set over there. And um, it's not a problem. When I go down on it, it's going to, you know, go over the top. It's going to push it, have a tendency to push down on it. So it's not going to hurt it. It's coming out again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this board out until I get the chip. Now, this is the transistor here that I need to identify and conveniently lay it over on its side. Now, why it's laying over, there's plenty of room to be standing straight up. But the leads are very close together. I don't know if I can get in close. You get some light in there. I hope there's a number on it. A bit of it, but there isn't. Let me see now. Oh, we're on the back, on the wrong side. <laughs> this is the transistor right here, but I can't get coordinated. Well, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go with the only way I know how to do it, and that's with the good old ILOP. And I'll read the numbers if there is any off, off to you. Damn thing, I can't get close enough. The board's in the way. It's not letting me focus in on it. There is a number on it. I'm going to need a microscope camera. I don't want to drag that out. I'd have to drag the laptop out. The battery's dead in it anyways. There's a 75 ohm resistor right there. I can plainly see that. <sighs> it's a transistor, but I can't read the number. I'm sorry. Well, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to try to get the polarity. You read it from the top. The notch is over here. Of course, the camera's on sideways, so I'm looking at everything sideways here. In other words, I'm looking at the board this way, but you're looking at it over here. So everything's bass backwards. 
I really don't know how you guys do it I, on, on close inspection. I really don't. All right. Well, I can probably get pin 12 all right, but it's, I'm going to risk shorting it out. I got to get the power supply hooked up. Well, actually, I put my batteries on here with clip leads. That's not a problem. I may not have to worry about connecting the meter up. I just need to connect my um, power supply, my 9 volts, I think. It's six, six double A's. Let me shut this off a minute. Hang on. I'm hand holding this, so it's going to be a little shaky. What it is, is these resistors that are in the foreground are upsetting the focus on this camera and all this stuff here. I just cannot read that. I'm sorry. I cannot read that. All I can do is test it. I have no idea it's NPN, PNP. Probably being that it's a plastic transistor of that type, I don't think there's any such thing as a PNP that would be made in that configuration of transistor. I could be wrong. I'm always wrong anyways. But maybe you can read a number. I cannot. If I try to zoom in on that, I'll go out of focus because I've got components here in the foreground that are upsetting the focus. Cannot. I cannot see that. Let's see if I turn this. I don't know if that's upside down or not the, the, on the transistor. If it wasn't for these other components that are upsetting my focus here, I know I can get a good close-up of this. All right, I got my inspection camera here. The one I put on the gooseneck. Get a flashlight on it. I'm having a hell of a time with this. And no, I'm not taking the transistor out. I'll never, never get it back in. The only way I could get it out is I have to cut the leads. They're too small to see. I cannot see that. I'm hoping maybe some of you can see it, but I can't. got a good bright light on there but this is manual focus on this camera here but even so I I can't get the camera in this the switches in the way everything's in the way here and it's hard for me to focus that because I gotta I'm holding the camera I'm holding the magnifying glass I can't focus the camera okay almost oh man man this is hard stuff to see I almost had it it looked like I had a pretty good view of it there but I just can't get it to illuminate properly. The transistor's on an angle, and if I bend it up anymore, it's going to short the leads out. And maybe break them off. Oh, man, this is so frustrating. Oh. I cannot even begin to read that. I see numbers in there. I cannot read them. I need a stable reading.
I don't know which way to turn this. All right, can any of you make that out? I can't. This is the best I can do, folks. This is the best I can do. Oh! I can't, I don't even think I can get my leads in there. I, um, on the cricket, cricket leads. I'm just going to have to just stick the chip in there after I test the polarity here and, and try it. I, I, if the ship, if this transistor is shorted, it's going to blow out the chip even if it's a, the proper chip, the TL494. He's going to blow the chip, chip out because the head's off of this one, of course. The top's blowing right off of it. So... Awkward place for the transistor. If this transistor was out in the open more, I could deal with it. I think the instrument makers, they do this purposely for the average guy that won't be able to service this. Now, I can't tell. If the, I don't think the leads are shorted. My only hope is to get the... I think they're all right. It's not going to focus because all this other stuff is in the way in the foreground. Camera's not going to focus on that. I can't get something to focus here when all this other stuff is in the way. But anyways, I hope you saw the number on that. Enough of this. Let me stop the video and see if I can get my uh, meter in there. I'll try to meter first for shorts. Hang on. All right, I got my meter set on diode here. Ohms and diode, that happens to be the same setting. Now, this is not going to be easy because I cannot see with my... Only using the reading glasses. I'll try to zoom in, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because the camera's on an angle. The camera's over here, and I have to have this face in me. in order to see it. I can't get too far away. I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Where is the transistor here? Let me move my... Okay. Well, you're not going to see where I got... You can see the chip, but the transistor is behind the chip. Okay. It's focusing on this. So. I can't read that. I cannot even see if my leads are on the transistor. Let me move the meter out of the way. This is going to do you good, but it won't do me any good. Oh. Nope, that's not working. My hands are in the way. I don't know. And underneath, there's too many traces here. That's why I, I don't like this stuff because it's too hard to trace out. The transistor could be anywhere in here. It's in this, where am I here? It's in this vicinity here. It could be any one of these connections here. Enough of this. Enough of this. I have no idea if the transistor is going or not. I would have to... Uh, Mike isn't going to go into this. Um, if I can't do it, I'll just dump it at the ham auction, that's all. 
So I'm just going to test for um, the polarity here. Let me get this back out. Hang on a minute. I got to go in the house and jot down the chart. I don't remember. I got to find out. Well, I think it's pin 7 is negative if it's a TL494 and pin 12 is a positive. I don't have the chart out here. It's on the computer. I'm going to have to bring it up and um, write it on a piece of paper and bring it out here. So I'll be back. Hang on. Well, I'm no artist. All out of proportion, but pin 12, positive, pin 7, negative. So, first thing I'm going to do is put a ohm meter from pin 7 to the negative of the battery. which is here and we'll do that with a clip lead because trying to hold them on and look at the meter I don't do too good okay we well, put a clip lead there and my ohm meter here. This way there's, I only have to look at one connection and that would be right here. And this is going to be hard. I don't have anything finer than this. This is a needle point here. You can get stuck and push hard enough on your finger. And hopefully I don't short anything out, but all I'm doing is putting an ohm meter on this. And we better turn the ohm meter on. It'll work better. Now let me um, set this on continuity. All right. So you can you can see we got continuity with the lead, so we don't have a problem there. We don't have continuity here on the switch frame, so it's. But that is the negative. It's a black wire. So now. As you're looking at the chip, the problem is I got to move this camera, uh, the board farther away from me, and I can't see it. So let me just see if I can get the get it like this. All right. So as I'm looking at it, pin seven helps if I turn it this way. Pin 7 is the second pin on the left from the bottom. All right. So if I get a tone here, I'll know I'm okay. I do. But now let's just see if I get a tone anywhere else. All right. So, pin 7, I get a tone. That's a good sign. Now, that means we'll flip this to volts now. I can't do both. I can't show you uh, what the meter's showing. You'll take my word for it. Oh, I turned it off. That's nice. Huh. All right. One volts now. Meters up there. Okay. Take my word for it. The best way I can do things. Now we got to get pin 12. Now pin 12. Come on. Get in camera. Pin 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4th from the bottom. Here's the notch up on top here. All right. One, two, three, four is 12. So I should have voltage there of whatever it is. 
Of course, they're not going to get anything until I connect up the battery pack. So I'll turn the camera off for now and um, be back when I hook this up. Okay, I've got it hooked up. We're getting 9.2 volts into the unit. The unit is turned on. And now we got to get pin number 12, which is the fourth pin up from the bottom right hand corner. And this is going to be very difficult for me to see. So I'm going to have to get my big ugly head in the way because I cannot work under a camera as I said so many times so let me turn this so I can get in here one and this is hard to see one two three nine point one nine volts on pin 12 plus so it looks like a TL 494 would work in there but the problem is I have no way of testing this transistor because I cannot get my leads in there and uh, of course I showed as best I could whatever numbers were on there I have to rely on you folks out there to, to see it and um, I got a lot of editing to do on this. But as I can, close as I can tell, we're getting 12 volts, the 9 volts. No. Oh. Oh, nice. The wire broke off. The damn wire broke off the uh, end where the clip was on. Ah, are we something? I hate this printed circuit stuff. Honest to God, I hate it. Uh, let's go this way. This is the way I like to make my connections on the board like that. See that? Then you know you got it. So let's double check that again now, see if we're getting... All right, the light is on. Right here. Let's double check it here. One, two, three... 9.16 volt on pin 12 positive okay now let's do one other thing here oh, the light keeps going out on this why is that pilot light out the chip is cold because we know it's blown anyways I'm moving the transistor. It didn't make it come on. Now, let me see. Not getting any voltage. Oh, battery lead came off on the other end. <laughs> okay, I'm getting 9.2 volts. It's a six double A's. Okay. All right, the, the, the battery lead was off on the other side over here. All right, so so I should be getting the 500 volts from here. I got the common ground connected, but I'm getting uh, uh, 0.22 volts, 0.220 volts, whatever that is, 
two tenths of a volt, I guess. So obviously it's not generating the 500 volts because normally you put your fingers across that, you'd be getting a, a good zap. These other two terminals over here are for reading the AC line voltage up to 16, I mean up to 600 volts. So this is simply an AC voltmeter, but this is the mega ohm, mega part of the meter, which puts out 500 volts DC, low current, in order to check resistances up to one gig ohm. In case you people want to know what this thing is, it's a mega, mega meter. All right, so that's going to conclude this here. Um. Sorry guys, I cannot test this transistor. I cannot identify it. I'm, you might be able to on the video. Let me just unhook these batteries here before the thing gets shorted out here. I'm going to leave this setting like this. When the chip comes in, the only thing I can do... Anyways... The only thing I can do is to just hope that this transistor is not shorted. If it's open, it probably won't hurt this. This blew out for a reason. I'm hoping that this is all that's wrong with it. Uh, those are some signal diodes in here along with resistors. Um, I could probably test those, but I'm not going to do any more on this now. I'm done for today. This is part one. Part two will be the fireworks. When I get the chip in, I'll plug it in and hope for the best. Because I, like I say, I can't test this transistor. And the only thing I can do is to send this whole damn thing out to somebody and have them fix it. And I hate having people fix my stuff. You know, it just don't sit well with me. But there's no way I can get that transistor, identify it. I cannot test it. It's just too small and crowded and cramped in there. That's it, folks. That's part one. There may be a part two. Well, actually, there'll be a part two of the explosion of the... <laughs> when I get the chip, I'll plug it in. And hope for the best. If it don't, I'm going to dump it at the ham auction. That's all. I'm not going to go paying somebody to work on every damn thing I've got. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the explosion coming to a computer near you. Take care, everybody. And have a good weekend.